It's a myth to believe that you can't talk to animals and it's a gift for only a few. It's our birthright. We are in fact born with the ability to have heightened intuition, connect with our animals, sense the land, feel what's going on. We lose that connection as we get older, be it through things that have been told to us, experiences that we've had or shut down that we become when we guard our hearts or close our minds. But truthfully, pretty much everybody can talk to animals. I've had thousands of clients throughout my career, thousands who have asked me to connect with their animals and thousands that have come to classes. But fewer people believe that they could do it too. But it's like anything, when you first start out on a career, you apprentice, you intern, you practice. You wouldn't choose that neurosurgeon and undergo the surgery with somebody that's never practiced before. And maybe if you've got your own business as an entrepreneur, you wouldn't seek the accountant that's just come out of school. As I was walking last summer with one of my clients to talk to her animals, she candidly said to me, I read a book. It didn't go too well. I thought I could speak to them after that. As many walks we read today and we don't become that individual. We can't read a book and become a firefighter, read a book and become a police officer or any first responder. There's really very few books we can read and then feel comfortable and confident in the knowing that we've grasped it and have the experience. Animal communication is the same. We need to learn. So when you're thinking at home that maybe you can't trust what comes through, you wouldn't be able to trust your skills as a driver when you first get out on the road because you've never driven before. You've sat next to an instructor. As a horse trainer, if you are a polo player, maybe you're not a three-day eventer. If you're a trail rider, maybe you're not a top-level dressage person doesn't matter what discipline you're in, what your hobby is, you don't enter that environment knowing it all. You have a teacher, a mentor, and you practice greatly. Animal communication is the same. You simply can't trust what you get because it's new. And at first it will seem like a fluke and another fluke and another fluke until all these flukes put together, you have enough proof to believe it. We're not looking at the generic proof either. We're looking at substantial proof only something the person knew, or a description of a place that you've never been to. Something about the past that can be validated. Don't begin with your own animals. You know almost everything about them. And if you don't, maybe you're unable to discover it or get the validations. You begin with those you know little about, those you can help. See, as an animal communicator, I wear many hats. Little did I know when I first embarked on this journey that that would be the case. I thought the animal communication would truly support me, not only with my own animals, but also all of those lives that I touch, the horses in particular. It's expanded from horses. My animal communication goes to the birds and it goes to the wild ones. I've also been fortunate to travel, to fly to different places and talk to individuals such as anteaters, toucans, a sloth, I've talked to the elephants, camels, monkeys, spider monkeys, and many, many more exotics. It doesn't stop with just our own animals. I feel like the first thing we need to look at is why we're entering animal communication. If you're stopping before you begin, you're not giving it an opportunity or a chance. But when we look at this, maybe we're looking to delve deeper for our own sakes, for the love of our own animals. That's where animal communication can come in, because as soon as you study it, your intuition will burst out into, into huge flames and you'll get exceedingly good at it. And you can expand it even more. It's like a muscle. The more you practice, the better you get. But then you're looking to draw the wild ones to you, interpret the messages from our spirit guides, even depending on your beliefs, connect with those on the other side to bring them back into our lives, to feel that we're no longer walking alone. Maybe you're looking to make a career out of it too. And that's when we expand it and we have thousands of case studies. 
It's not about one, two, or ten. That wouldn't make us proficient, but neither would it be okay to hang a shingle out. So for me, it goes beyond talking to the animals where we're looking at simplistic things, maybe to help them get comfortable in our homes or look at what their hobbies want to be. We're looking at a variety. See, to become an animal communicator, you become a medical intuitive as well. You become a behaviorist, a coach, a counselor. Maybe you're looking to bring the lost ones home and so you're becoming somebody that goes out there for search and rescue. For those that wish to help animals transition, we're ministers, preachers. We're looking to talk to those on the other side, where now we could be delving into mediumship and talking to those on the other side. We really expand our horizons by seeing if these individuals want to come back to us. So we look at past lives, past lives in this lifetime, past lives in the next lifetime, reincarnation even. And suddenly our hats that we wear are quite eclectic. So it's a journey, a journey of self-discovery. And it's a journey for you to discover what it is you want. What do you want out of it? Create that depth that you seek to answer a childhood dream. Change your career when you're going from one to another. Expand your consciousness. Change your paradigm. Connect with all life. What are we looking for? Because then we learn to trust. Trust gets spoken about a lot. And in order to trust, we have to trust ourselves. So trust that it's real and honest, truthful. Trust that we're getting these incredible hits, that we're not making them up. And trust also comes in time. See, not with 10 sessions or 100 sessions. You begin to trust yourself when you know it's real and true. And the trust also grows when somebody tells you, yes, I understand what you're talking about, or only I knew that. And the more we do that, the more we learn what it feels like to connect, to communicate, to keep the connection and get the dialogue. More doubt disappears doesn't disappear overnight in a day or a weekend or even a week sometimes not even in a year the doubt disappears in time and if you only practice a little bit it won't disappear just like it wouldn't for any sportsman if he doubts his ability doesn't trust his ability it comes through gaining the accolades gaining the experiences the same with animal communication trust comes with experience knowledge comes with experience Language is unique to you, although it's a language of love and it's universal and everybody can access it, you still have to learn your own unique language. Where maybe for me it appears in the movies and the inner knowing and the sense, I'll smell things, hear things, see words written, I'll know the difference between a memory, a projection, a preconceived idea or when the memory is relevant. I know when I'm slipping in and out of the conversations or why my animals are coming in. But that's decades of experience. So of course, the doubt is a healthy piece. Without it, we wouldn't look inside. We wouldn't question, we wouldn't learn. And the speed at which you can communicate with animals depends on you. How much of your heart do you need to protect? And how much is it being guarded that you can let it go? How much do you want this? How much are you willing to put in and to commit to the journey and be dedicated? That's where it becomes a journey of self-discovery and it's down to you how long it takes. But it's not an overnight piece. Yes, on every class, everybody connects. On every class, there's phenomenal hits. Could be one, could be two, could be 10, could be 20. Sometimes the most skeptical individuals have had the most hits. Sometimes those that find it difficult to connect are wanting it so badly. Maybe as they connect with an individual, they're remembering their grief from having lost somebody. And of course that would block us. So in a class, we learn what the blockages are and how to overcome them and move through them. On your own, it could take a while because you're seeking answers and maybe you don't know where to look. But it's important. I think today's society doesn't always have a mentor but it's good to seek a mentor. We can speed things up. With your practice and your dedication, we can help you. 
figure out why things are working or not working. But you don't need to worry or be skeptical that you can't do it. There's so much to it. We learn to drop into our hearts. We learn to quieten those minds, to connect with nature, to connect with source, to recognize our language, to read it, to understand what is the past, the present or the future. What is ours? What's the animal trying to say? When we get a word, for example, one of neglect, are they talking about themselves? Are they concerned and worried? Or is it actually happening to them? When we get that word, does it mean the past or the present or a fear of the future? Does it mean that they're talking about a loved one, maybe their steward or guide, and not about themselves at all? There's so much to the language. Just like there is if we learn a foreign language, like Spanish, different in Argentina or Portugal, different in Spain, Portuguese in Portugal, but different in all these different countries with the accents like Mexico, etc. And we have to learn the dialect and the colloquialisms. The same with this. You're learning your language and coming to understand it. So when you doubt it and think you can't do it, you can. When you look at a strong and deep journey, look at mine. Mine was one of the hardest journeys where I came from a background where you wouldn't believe these things and be exceedingly sarcastic and concerned about them. It wasn't part of my paradigm. And I shifted that all together, always keeping my eye on the target, always knowing that even if I didn't have the answers, I wanted to find them. And soon enough, the animal communication became part of my life and very real. Indeed, it expanded my horizons beyond any beliefs. Now, I travel different continents to talk to animals. So no matter what your desire is, for your own or for others, to help in the rescue industry or become a better horse trainer, to look at dog walking, dog grooming, being there as a pet sitter, no matter if you're seeking answers or you're looking to console yourself with those on the other side. Are they returning to you at any time? Animal communication is there for everyone. I would love for you to join us and learn a little bit more.